there, Caleb Logic here, and in this video we're going to take a look at the Tesla Model S and how it relates to the Tesla Model 3. I'm here with Jason Zook. We actually reviewed the Tesla Model 3 in its entirety, so go, and go ahead and check out that video as well. But today we're going to compare the Model S to the 3 because if you get a used one of these and a souped up Model 3, they're actually pretty close in price. So Jason rented this car again for us to take a look at and let's hop inside and drive around a little bit. Jeez. Everything inside me is round in different place. Oh god. I'll do that one. And then the other one you just grab it as well. Yeah, sure. Perfect. Do you feel like you're in France right now? No, it's less comfortable being in France. <laughs> well, there go our French sponsors. So we found some shade at a Motel 6. So we are at a Motel 6. This, we, is, this we, is our first time together at a Motel 6, just so everyone knows. And the last. <laughs> and we are not going in a room because there's probably something shady happening. So let's talk about exterior a little bit. Yeah, so for me, this is why I'm pitting the Model S versus the Model 3 is while I love the newness of the Model 3, I don't love the styling. I have always loved the S. This is the uh, original Model S, so it has the nose cone, as people call it, in the front. Uh, and, and I just really like the exterior. You walked out as soon as I got to your place and you're like, it just looks better. Yeah, after seeing the Model 3 multiple times the last yeah. few days, seeing the, the Model S again, and this one's in silver, which I think is a little better than black. Yeah, I actually, if I was going to buy one, I would buy the dark silver or the dark gray, whatever they want to call it. Space gray. Space gray, yeah, <laughs> match my laptop. Uh, so for me personally, I love the curves of the Model S so much more. I love the 21 inch turbine wheels that come with this one. I actually really liked the wheels on the, um, the car that they brought out when they announced the three, but those aren't available for sale and they probably won't be for a long time. So I just don't love the exterior of the Model 3 and if I'm gonna spend that much money on a car, I wanna love it. Like I wanna walk up to it every day and be like, I love you, you're, you're my car. I wanna make love to you at a Motel 6. No, I don't. <laughs> Uh, one thing that we noticed right away too is the door handles. I mean, that's something that Tesla takes a lot of pride in doing differently. Um, and I just love the way that these work. Like you walk, you walk up, up they keys open. in your pocket, it slides out. It's like it's welcoming. It's like, hey, come on, get in. Let's go drive super fast. Uh, the Model 3 doesn't do that. You have to, you know, put your thumb and then pull the thing and you look like an idiot if you do it wrong. Uh, so it's just those little things. I, I think otherwise, to me, the Model 3 looks great from the front. And that's about the only place it looks great. This car to me looks great from almost every angle. Mm -hmm. There's not an angle that I don't like. Um, and then probably another exterior thing is just the fact that knowing this car is bigger. I think people say it's 15 inch longer. So if you have a small garage, I mean, that could be a consideration, mm -hmm. but uh, it definitely feels bigger. I don't know about you, yeah. but even just like being in it and driving it, like you definitely feel like you have a lot more car around you. Harder to turn around and you turn. And well, and we did, we actually, as I was turning around at your place, I was like, oh, this is gonna be like a nine point turn. It was the same amount of points to get the Model yeah. 3 out as it was to get this. So it actually wasn't that different even in a tight space, uh, but it does feel quite a bit bigger. Yep, it's happening. It's a guy. I figured I'd acknowledge. Did he look at us before you said that? Yeah, 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 multiple okay. times, yeah. Okay, so let's talk price. Why are you considering a used Model S versus a right Model 3? Yeah, Yeah. I mean, you get out the door with a Model 3 at like 60,000 when you pick all the options. So at that price point, you're no longer, you're, you're in Model S territory, especially for used Model S's. Uh, you can get cheaper Model S's than 60,000. Uh, but the one that I'm looking at is the P85D, which is why we have this one. Because of the performance, because of the bigger wheels, um, that's the one that, that I kind of find uh, to be matching all the feature for feature things that I would want. So the price for a P85D used is going to be in the 70 to 80,000. You might be able to find it a little bit under. So it's close enough, it's not direct, but you can find like 60D, 70D, those Model S's will be direct compare, comparatively to the Model And the only pricing. difference is 
power and performance or is battery capacity part of that too? The, all those things are gonna be a little bit different. The Again, the long range battery on the Model 3 is gonna give you 300 miles. I don't even know what the battery distance are on the 60 and 70D. This P85D full charge is 253 miles. Uh, in insane mode, you probably get like nine miles. And the, the Model 3 we were driving yesterday had three, the, 310. Yeah. Yeah. Fully Which, charged. Again, like I don't think that's as important as most people think because when are you ever going to drive 250 straight miles? Even in a gasoline powered car, you still have to stop to get gas at some point in there because you're going to have to pee, you're going to be hungry. Yeah. So the 50 mile range is not a huge deal to me at all and I'm fine to take a little bit less range for the power and performance of this car. So anything else to consider price wise no, between the, and the Model 3? I think one of the other things that people are talking about is the technology between the years in gap between the Model 3 and the Model S. And for me personally, like if you're getting all the sensors in the Model S and it has that stuff, a lot of people are talking about the uh, hardware one versus two in the autopilot. I just, autopilot, like, we're not going to be doing that for probably five to ten years. You're comfortable driving yourself for the next decade? And even if I just have regular autopilot that's not, like, the super advanced, whatever the newest stuff is, I'm going to be okay. Like, it's not a huge deal to me. And I think people just want all the things, and you're never going to use all the things anyway. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to not have, like, the exact same newest updated technology. They will update a lot of the stuff over the air anyway, which is how Tesla does it. Um, so, yeah, I feel like they're pretty closely compared feature to feature, uh, in the price range of, depending on which model you want, Model S and Model 3. Once I finish this, I have another topic for us to discuss. Mine, mine is bigger than yours. <laughs> Presumptuous. <laughs> wow. All right, Caleb, how do you feel about the interior difference between the two? Um, so we did our six foot four in the back seat kind of thing. Yes. In the Model 3 review. Does it fit? I, I, let me, all the way up. Uh, I still hit the glass. Yeah, you're touching. Yeah. I still hit the glass. Yeah, I mean, we're both tall. And there is this little thing that you, like, could bump your head on. Yeah. But we're never going to sit like that. Just like in the Model 3, you're never going to sit all the way up. Like, you're going to sit comfortably. You're going to sit down. Do you feel like we have more room width-wise? Like, knees touching? Yeah. I think a person could fit here. I think the car is wider in the back seat. Yeah. This Model S is, for sure. Yeah. And there's way more, like arm room it's more comfortable you have your seat kind of set where it was not as far back and i feel like way more room way more room yeah my seat i put all the way forward so i have like i can play all kinds of games here um but i think it's pretty comparable back mm -hmm. seat wise i mean for us it's definitely still comfortable you can reach into the trunk in the model s which you can't in the model 3 this is like closed off yeah the hatchback the, the hatchback is a huge uh different differentiator differentiator huge you, oh God, don't do that. Um, and you can also do a third row of seats as well. Uh, some people like to do that. I'm when not, I was a kid, my, out fr back. my friend had a station wagon. Yeah, faced well, out back. My friend's parents had one. Well, of course. And we would take- Did they have a pool too? They had trampoline, two trampolines. <laughs> rich, rich. Not just regular <laughs> folk that knew how to spend their money wisely on it's station true. wagons and trampolines. True. And we would sit in the back and I would take like a hanger for a shirt. Uh -huh. And that was my bow and arrow that I would shoot at the at cars. At the cars, yeah. 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 You get pulled over for that these days. You gotta be careful. Yeah. Yeah. I get pulled over all the time these days. Because <laughs> <laughs> so you're can... sitting on, on the back of the car, yeah. actually throwing hangers yes. with an aluminum foil hat. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you could fit two more child-sized people. Yeah. Uh, the glass roof is definitely a huge difference in here than it is in the Model 3. There's a there's a much bigger kind of cross beam across yeah. the, the top here. And I think even in the front seat too, you have much less uh, kind of sight line out of the front windshield. Yeah, it feels more like you're in a plane in the Model S. Like the nose of it, like yeah. it's like smaller. Like your viewing area is smaller. On the Model Three, it's pretty expansive. It's not as like all glass as the Model X. But yeah, yeah, the Model X can't is, really beat that. The Model X is disorienting though. Like you look it's up like, and you're like, Oof. it's like you're in a convertible. Yeah. yeah. But I would say even like interior styling in this, when I first got in it after having the Model 3 the past couple days, I was like, oh, there's so much stuff. There's vents and there's things and there's trim. Two and, screens. Yeah, there's, there's lots of screens. There's gauges and other things. 
But then as we've driven it around, like it's still great. You compare it to whatever existing car you probably have. I have a Volkswagen SUV, sorry. Um, and it feels so much nicer than that. So it's just a whole different experience. Uh, and then comparing the two, it just feels so much more minimal in the mm -hmm. Model 3, as we yeah. talked about in the other video. Uh, but it does, I mean, it's, it's a great car. I mean, yeah. I have nothing to complain about. Uh, there's lots of places to put things, um, you know. Getting you know. in and out is maybe a little easier, but. Yeah, you don't have buttons. You have actual you door have handles. handles. Yeah. yeah, people might be happy about that. There are no cup holders back here. I just realized that. But there's no USB ports. Do you have anybody that you let carry drinks in the back of your car? I don't. No. Yeah. So, you need cup holders. Don't bring drinks in my car. No. I have one Lacroix that I put in the center console, and that's it. And only you can drink out of it. Exactly. <laughs> so what's happening right now? Uh, we're stuck in the back. We believe child lock might be on. Uh, we you cannot get out. <laughs> yeah, we can't open these. <laughs> One feature of the Model S. No, just of all cars. Okay, let's see if I can figure this out here. Uh, active safety, display, driver assistance maybe? Ooh, doors and locks. I'm feeling good. Child protection lock. Let's go off. Oh, we're free! Wait, wait. Jason, can we start? <laughs> Jason. Just for a minute, okay. <laughs> God, I love some Nickelback. No, I don't. One of the big differences of the interior between the two is the 17 inch vertical screen of the S and the- This lens makes your biceps look huge, by the way. Thank you. I have been watching a lot of fitness videos on YouTube. Have That's how you get big biceps. You just watch fitness videos on so YouTube. So you were saying. Yeah, uh, 15 inch horizontal screen in the Model 3. One thing you noticed that I didn't really notice, but you're more of a tech guy than I am, is that this screen brightness wasn't as bright for you uh, in the Model S as it is in the Model 3. I think everything else is probably on par if you're comparing the two. All the same features, all the same things. This one, you know, if you want like the full screen map, you can go the full screen map. Again, like if you wanted to find this Motel 6 uh, where we were hanging out, I mean, it's right here, you know, if you wanted to go check that out. Uh, the only thing for me is it is a little bit slower, uh, trying to change things, getting into the controls. I mean, it's all pretty standard stuff. The one thing that this uh, Model S has that the Model 3 doesn't though, and now I don't know how to get back to it because I don't own a Model S. Let's see here. Can I go here? No. Where's the thing? That's that. That does all these fun things. You find these fun things. We did these in the Model 3 as well. You know, you can be on Mars if you want. We're on Mars. And it is just a little bit slower. It's not, it's just not as quick, but I can't remember how to, oh, there it is. So one thing the Model 3 doesn't have is a web browser built in too. I don't know how often you would ever use this feature, but it's a feature nonetheless uh, that the one doesn't have versus the other. Backup camera, we just had a sweet motorcycle drive by. And then the secondary dash here is kind of the missing piece for a lot of people who have a Model 3. I noticed that I was paying attention to this because I'm used to this in my car. Uh, I think it's helpful to see the speed there, the music, if you have navigation that will be on the right. But I think you would get used to it if it was here. I don't think it's necessarily anything that you're going to be upset about if you don't have this dash. I think you're just going to adjust. Uh, there you go. It's a sweet van. Yeah, that's the creepy van that would go to a Motel 6. Yes, right it there. is. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to park. They're going to meet us at our room 145. Yeah, yeah that's what we ordered, right, on Chris? <laughs> So if you really need to check ESPN while you're driving, <laughs> you can do it. You and need if you to get a Model S. If you're on autopilot, then you can do it. You can go full screen. You can read all the stories, see what Shaq's talking about. I mean, you got it. So are you going to get a Model S used or I think so. a Model 3 new? If I had to decide right this minute, I would probably pick not this specific car, but a P85D, the dark gray, 21 inch wheels, a couple years used, but like tech package, all the other upgrades. Kind of What's that gonna cost? Somewhere between 70 and 80,000, depending on the, the miles Versus the a $60,000 Model 3. Yeah. Spec'd out. Yeah. Okay. I think you would agree. Yeah? If you were mm -hmm. in my boat? I've only bought one car in my entire life and it was $10,000, <laughs> so anything is going to be a shock. exponentially an upgrade. Yeah, but if you were picking between the two and you were spending that much money? Probably. Just for me, I like the extra space that yeah. this has. And you can never get more space. 
Yeah. Like you can't be like, oh, I'll just add another Lego piece under the back of my car. <laughs> Come I mean, on, Elon, where's that model? I mean, you could, but you'd probably get pulled over. Yeah, you, uh, people definitely have, now that I think about it. You've definitely seen those really janky cars. It's like a plywood top. <laughs> yeah. Like just build just this a, out. Just a topper, yeah. yeah. Just round it out, put a nice little tent on the back here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look up.